The Sons and Daughters Podcast. Discover and walk in the life that Jesus lives inside of you. Hosted by Andy and Tina Hayner, leaders of Full Speed Impact Ministry. We are excited to be with you again today. We are uh, going to be talking about some exciting things today that are going to encourage you in your walk with Jesus in, so that you can impact the world around you. Uh, how have you been doing, Miss Tina? I've been doing great. Yeah, just taking it one day at a time. It's yeah. the best way to, to go about things. It's about all you can do. Yeah. Uh, at the present day, we are under the COVID-19 lockdown, and we've been under lock and key in our house for... Gosh, three, four weeks. Yeah, I was seems say, like about forever. A month, yeah, seems like. And for me, it kind of stretches back even further because I was originally going to go to China. I had a mission trip to China planned in February, uh, and so I was planning to go. They started to release news about this outbreak and things like that over in China, and I had all kinds of people encouraging me not to go. But I really believe that believers are part of the solution mm -hmm. and that we run into yeah. the fire and that Jesus has given us authority to heal the sick. And that's part of what we were uh, mm -hmm. going over there to help believers do. But I can't walk there. <laughs> <laughs> and they they canceled my can't plane. Swim. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I, might, I might, might be able to float over there, but by the time I get there, uh, be a prune. <laughs> don't, don't know uh, how much good I would be for for the people in China. Yeah. I'd probably be missing a few legs and toes with, with the sharks. Yeah. And... They'd be ministering to you for sure. <laughs> yeah. So. But, uh, so that cleared my schedule in February and now, uh, and just it, in time to just have it cleared for, no, March. for March and, and April. April and May. May. I had my <laughs> whole year already booked mm -hmm. this year for conferences and for ministry. And uh, so far, everything that I had booked, with a few small exceptions locally, has been either postponed or canceled uh, because of this virus. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's been real, a real challenge. It will be interesting, and this is a neat thing that this is recorded, and that uh, sometime in the future we'll be able to look back at this and say, "Hey, look at, <laughs> look and listen what what we were thinking and saying and." Uh, mm -hmm. believe in. I know Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, so he's not going to change, but... He'll change us, though. <laughs> yeah, he will, and our circumstances change. Um, That's for sure. And, and we change, and we should change, so... But, yeah. uh Looking forward to, to some changes, though, for the good. <laughs> yeah. Tina <laughs> will uh, attest to, to you that uh, when I began to see that this that everybody was o was overreacting or reacting in fear, I believe it's an overreaction. That um, and the government was shutting everything down and everybody was panicking. I was so frustrated. I was a grumpy puss for about yeah, a, couple a day. Of days. A couple of days. Yeah. I thought, <laughs> I thought it was just one. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't quite as resilient as I wanted to be. And, and I let Tina know. I said, you know, I'm just having to, to grieve. Process. I'm having yeah. to process this with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because it's difficult being a person of faith in the midst of a people of panic when you see that people are making the wrong choices and going bad directions mm. and letting fear win the day. And mm -hmm. I believe in uh, in general precautions. I also believe in faith. Um, and so it just was difficult for me, I think, as a lot of people, just you to know, make the adjustments. It totally reminds me of um, uh, my quiet time this morning. I was, I'm was i reading through Exodus and I was reading um, Moses. I've gone through the 10 plagues and the Passover and stuff, and now they're wandering around in the wilderness. And um, uh, at I'm at the point where um, they uh, hit a place where there was no water mm -hmm. and they're grumbling to, to Moses and, and he's like, it's not me you have a problem with this, the Lord. <laughs> he's like, Lord, what do I do with these people? You know, and it just totally reminds me, you know, Moses had faith. You know, mm -hmm. he turned, he's like, he he didn't seem real uptight that we didn't have water. Right. He just knew, okay, God, you got us through the Red Sea. You got us out of Egypt. What do I do? What do I do with these people? That was his headache. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, and, and it's amazing. And I just, I was like, you know, God had, 
separated them from the the plagues, you know, separated them from the Egyptians to show that, no, they aren't going through this. Mm -hmm. He got them through the Red Sea and drowned the Egyptian army Mm -hmm. just to kind of seal the deal that, you know, the enemy is, your enemy's done in. Um, And and he had already turned bitter water into sweet. He had already, by this point, provided manna. And um, and yet they're still, they hit a point and they're like, ah, what do we do? We're going to thirst to death. And it's like, he, why would he get you through the Red Sea just to bring you to that point? Sometimes we don't believe God's really good and he has good intentions for us. Well, in, in the flesh, it seems like, well, that is the time to hit the panic button. Right. There's I'm, no water, I'm no thirst. food. Yeah. You know, I'm out here in the middle of the desert. In mm-hmm. fact, uh, there's not just no water, no food for me. There's no water, no food for us. Right. And there's for a million children. of us. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. And so, right. you know, a lot of times people begin to freak. There's this herd mentality. Mm-hmm. I remember when this first started happening, everybody started rushing for toilet paper for mm-hmm. some reason. I'm mm-hmm. like, what the heck? You know, I mean, <laughs> come on, people. There's options, options there. there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you worse comes to worse. You can get a washcloth and hit the shower or after every time you go to the bathroom, bathroom yeah, that way if you need to yeah. and just do some laundry but mm-hmm. or take it to the burn pile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, figure out which leaves are poisonous and which ones aren't, that kind of thing. But, Absolutely. Yeah, but, um, you know, how just as humans it is it's easy to to look at um the israelites coming fresh out of being enslaved and that right. mentality and um and they have no faith in the lord and um and and they're panicking and and i mean not having water is is a big deal you right. know and your health being at risk is a big deal um but um but it's funny that they would have more confidence that their egyptian slave masters would take, take care, care of, of them, them than god, god almighty who, that had who, delivered them amen over over and over and over. So, yeah, it's a it's a rebuke, you know, to to look back at that yeah. to them, but a rebuke to us sometimes when we fall into those mindsets. And um, and good for us to encourage our brothers and sisters, you know, to be kind of more like a a Moses and you know, and and then his friends Aaron and her that mm-hmm. held up his hands, you know, when he needed to um, hold up the staff for them to beat their enemies. Is you know having standing in faith when everyone else can only see the disaster. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't in Exodus. I actually read in Numbers this morning, Mm -hmm. Um, but I was kind of in a similar situation. But in in the chapter that I read, Miriam died at the beginning, Mm -hmm. Aaron died at the end, Mm -hmm. and the people of God, they're back at the Red Sea. I never really realized that their wilderness wanderings had taken them full Full circle. circle. Now they're 40 years later, back exactly Exactly where they had started before, and the previous leadership, except for Moses, had died off, and Mm. all the people had come to Moses complaining, you know, why have you done this to us, etc. Forty years later, honestly, it checked my heart. As much as I love freedom, as much as I think that the governor in our state, Wisconsin, uh, is overstepping his boundaries and constitutional boundaries, it reminded me not to be a grumbler, a complainer. Right. Um, We do need to stand up for freedom. We do need to be able to speak out. But we need to speak out in a way that encourages God's people and all people to reach their God-given destiny, not Mm -hmm. just complaining, uh, reminding people that there is enough, that we're going to make it through this, Mm -hmm. we're going to make it through there together and here's a better way right um instead of just you know i don't want to be a complainer right grumbling never gets anywhere it reminds me of that verse that talks about um you know do everything without grumbling mm. and complaining and that when you do you shine like a star in the night sky That's true. um that there's something that sets you apart um, the light of Christ shines through you when when that just sim- the sim- by simply putting the negative grumbling aside. Right. You know. Yeah, the world uh, hits hard times and they immediately start arguing, grumbling, and complaining. And uh, you know, it's good to take a step back to say, realize we you know we've got a lot to be thankful for. It was mm-hmm. interesting that don't be anxious about anything, but in all things in prayer and supplication with, with thanksgiving, thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. make your request known to God. And that shift right there of one coming into the presence of God uh, coming, first of all, coming out of grumbling, coming out of complaining. You got to do that. Come into the presence of God. You can't bring all your grumbling and complaining into the presence of God. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to turn your heart towards being thankful. And there's mm. all 
always so much to be thankful do. for. Yeah. Like one thing I'm very thankful for is that in the midst of this quarantine, that we still have a roof over our head. Yes. We have one we have another. We have food. a great family. We, we have, have food. We have toilet paper. Running water. <laughs> yeah. We're getting some projects done. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hanging out with people that I love very much and don't get a chance to, mm -hmm. you know, often have to spend time away from. Mm -hmm. um, and it's relaxed time. Um, and also things, uh, an opportunity to, in the midst of shutting down certain activities, um, am able to start other things like this podcast is starting up as a result right. of having this extended time, time to time, right. invest it's been something in, in the back of our minds for a while. But there's yeah. a big learning curve, mm -hmm. you know, to be able mm -hmm. to come up with something like this. And uh, so that's been really exciting as well. <clears throat> you know, yeah. some other things that um, have been going on right now. I, I've been kind of enjoying uh, looking over your shoulder while you've been ministering to yeah. uh, to some people uh, via text message, which is something I never <laughs> thought I'd see in a thousand years. Me either. My wife is... I cannot stand texts. I'd much rather talk on the phone mm -hmm. or face-to-face. -face. I'm a phone girl or face-to-face -face girl. I think for the longest time you had that flip ever. phone where you had to, <laughs> to you know three one. times yeah. to get to Thank see. Thank goodness and, I don't have a flip phone anymore. Oh my gosh! Well, we brought you into the modern world, and <laughs> now God's putting <laughs> you I to still, use. Yeah, and I still I, I had to grow. It's good. I mean, it's it's good for me at least. You know, maybe by the time we have grandkids, grandma can it still at least text them. <laughs> oh, you'll be the coolest grandma ever. But yeah. Uh, but it's been exciting because uh, Tina kind of got pulled into a relationship via a friend mm -hmm. who um, had a relationship, a business association, kind of a multi level marketing uh, connection uh, where they're involved in the same uh, group, I believe. Mm -hmm. I and so. um, and this, this lady, Lisa, we'll just use her first name, uh, she had uh, reached out to Luann or. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. always say Joanne, Lou <laughs> yeah. Ann, uh about uh, help with her marriage. Well, as their relationship progressed, Lou Ann became, you know, was obviously pointing her to Jesus. And some of the things that Lou Ann was sharing about what Jesus was doing in her marriage was really attractive to Lisa. Mm -hmm. Um, and but as they continued their relationship, Luann became very aware that Lisa was involved in witchcraft and a lot mm -hmm. of witchcraft, and Lisa didn't see Anything any wrong, wrong with it. With it. Mm -hmm. And but Luann felt stuck. She mm -hmm. felt very intimidated about trying to minister effectively to somebody who was involved in mm -hmm. that. So she pulled uh, Tina in. Yeah, and I, you know, I was so proud of her for doing that. Um, that. Um, because I felt like that sometimes praying for someone is like, you know what? I can help you. I know I've got the Holy Spirit and he knows everything, but sometimes we, we just need the body. We need a little bit, you know, people that have maybe gone a little bit further ahead of us and a little bit mm -hmm. more, um, had different experiences. And so, um, that was a very wise thing, but, um, it's been such a joy and such a pleasure to, to uh, be ministering really to both of them because Luann's right. kind of in on our text and so she's kind of learning as right they as got we a little go. they got a little group, group chat going yeah and so, so um, all of their Lisa and Tina's correspondence yeah but I think you know the the thing that's intimidating sometimes is oh they're you know into the crystals and the tarot cards and that kind of thing and that's just of the devil and and it is but um there's a there's a reason why they're seeking. Mm -hmm. um, they're just looking in the wrong place. And just like someone that you may not be intimidated about, like maybe they're looking for love in all the wrong places, like maybe through um, going to bars, going to or... bars, sleeping around, being promiscuous, um, or trying drugs and that kind of thing. And maybe sometimes people may feel more comfortable with that because they have their own experience or they understand it more mm -hmm. um but uh it's really the same heart cry it's really that void um and and all that um that they they want answers for they want they they ha they recognize an emptiness there and they're um, looking for help they're mm -hmm. looking for and for these particular people uh you know lisa she's looking for ways to uh, how would you describe it? Maybe look a sense of security. Yeah. A lot yeah. of times she would go and get psychic readings and tarot readings. To confirm things. Or, yeah, mm -hmm. just because she wasn't quite sure what was going on and she wanted that sense of 
of affirmation Nation. needing to be reaffirmed mm -hmm. that this is what's happening. What's funny is that a lot of times that those readings were oh, wrong, wrong. Yeah. Um, but just going through the motions of all that mm -hmm. seemed to meet some sort mm -hmm. of a need in her. And, you know, deceiving spirits are happy to make you feel like that is being met. And, sure. um, and, and she, you know, it's funny. Some people, again, are more comfortable with this than, than others, but like, um, she was seeking spiritual help. I mean, because right. you know, she was looking at her issues as as that there's some spiritual things going on, and she's right. She right. was just misdirected and and deceived, um, but not any longer. And Christ broke through in His light and His truth, and it's just been such a joy to be mm -hmm. a part of um, and watch. Well, this is really important because there's a lot of people out there that I think uh, if they don't now they will or they definitely should have relationships and conversations with people who believe very differently mm -hmm. than them. A lot of times, if we don't feel confident, though, we choose to walk away from those conversations or never give them an opportunity to start. But we are the ones that Jesus has called right. to be salt and light, and to be witnesses in the midst of this world. Mm -hmm. And when we really know Him and the power of His Spirit, um, then, and we know the truth of the gospel, we're not afraid. We can be his agents, even if it involves us learning how to text. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could text, text quickly <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and figure out the emojis so that, you know, yeah. when you, you, you're trying, trying to put some emotion behind those words to make right. sure it comes across right. Um so why don't you share, where did you start things off with Lisa? Um, how do you start a, a conversation with somebody? You know, did you just jump right in and say, you know, all those things are an abomination to God, you, <laughs> you foolish, wicked person, you need to repent or God's going to get you? Yeah, or, no, or do no. you sidestep those issues? No, I, you don't sidestep them. Mm -hmm. you got to confront things head on. Um, um, but... Um, telling the truth, but with love. So, right. um, you know, she needed to know, you know, often she would say, you know, and I, I, I found this out. What do you think? And I'm like, it, it's, a, I'll tell you, it's a, it's a deceiving spirit and not just from my opinion, but help point her to some scriptures. But the, the, the thing that really helped the most wasn't just, okay, this is wrong. Get away from it. Right. Cause there's a reason why she's doing that. It's trying to meet, meet a need. Um, I said, why don't every time you really, you hit a hard spot, you hit some crisis and you just feel like, oh, I got to I got to see the tarot reader. Um, instead of doing that, open your Bible and read and start in the gospel of John, read and, and don't just kind of try to read through it in a large amount, but really stop and pray. Ask God, mm -hmm. what, you know, what, it, what are you showing me? What do I need to see in this? And if it just seems really overwhelming, call me. Right. Well, I'll pray for you right then and there, you know? Um, and, uh, and I, and I challenged her. I said, um, the, the trick is, is that this, this is a distraction of the enemy. Mm -hmm. It's a deception and a distraction. And so if you can purposely put this aside mm -hmm. and turn to God instead, I know he will be faithful. He will reveal himself to you and you're going to get set, start on right. a path that is right and, and, and starting to meet your needs. And sure enough, you know, it, it, yeah, she said, okay. And she committed. Um, and I think a couple of times she reached out for a call mm -hmm. um, and that's exactly, I'm glad she did and was able to pray with her over the phone. Um, but she, yeah, she got into the word and replaced God's, you know, replace the tarot reading and, and that, that kind of those spiritual uh, sidetrack things with, with the right. word, mm -hmm, well, with the truth. You know, a few things uh, just to kind of reemphasize of what you've said. One thing that's really important is that you identified her felt need, but also the cry of her heart right. that was driving everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, God has hardwired us with certain desires in uh, of our heart, and mm -hmm. the desires of our mm -hmm. heart aren't things that you're going to shut off. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is, is that sin and deception twist those things so that our desire for security, our desire for love, our desire for affirmation, 
affirmation, all of those things that God has, has put in our hearts. The Word of God says, delight yourself in the Lord and you will find the desires of your heart. heart. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, our, you know, that's our hard wiring. We just have, have to, to have those things, mm-hmm. but they can only be fully met in a relationship mm-hmm. with, with God. God. Right. And the other thing that was, uh, and so rather than uh, coming at her and telling her, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're right. wrong. there wasn't a condemnation. That's very often mm-hmm. w- what people hear, and that's the approach that people take. Um, and, because it is wrong. <laughs> and then a lot of Christians know that's not a good approach. That's going to drive my friends away, but they never learn a different way. Mm-hmm. And so my encouragement if in any situation is try to get close enough to people that you can hear the cry of their heart. Mm-hmm. And for her, she was in a very frustrated uh, marriage. And we, you know, we may have some opportunities because we've learned a lot walking through this process with her. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That That's probably a subject for another uh, podcast for sure. But at this point, <laughs> we just want to share a little bit. So that was her, her felt need. And at first I remember a lot of her texts because Tina was sharing this with me. She was reading texts to me and we were fellowshipping about mm-hmm. what God was doing. Praying for her and and a lot of it at first was, um, how is this going to help me in my marriage? Right. You know, right. if I do that, will he, change? will he, will he change my husband? Will he make my mm-hmm. husband uh, right. and heart better? And those kind of things. Right. How yeah. did you handle that? My answer, I was like, I know I'm sounding like a broken, broken record, Lisa, but over and over and over, um, you do you. Mm-hmm. That's that's all you can do. I, you know, um, there's a lot of hope and a lot of promise for, for change. Um, as you change, I can't help but believe that he's going to see some things and probably change and make some decisions. But um, but, you know, you you don't you don't do things or change things to manipulate and get someone else to do that because they're in charge of them and you're in charge of you. So right. do it for you. Absolutely. And uh, and trust God in it. And and again, she, you know, uh, it was is able to have been pushing through some of those things, mm-hmm. and, you know, and she has desires and those those things are OK, wanting good communication and that kind of thing. But um, but but I'm going to do this so it'll make you change. That's not the right motivation. Right. But there did eventually come a point where she began to realize that she needed to change and that she would rather go through whatever she has to go through with her husband. You know, he's, he's a jerk a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, maybe he's going to remain a jerk. Maybe God's going to change his heart. Mm -hmm. But then the question eventually came back to her was if my husband is a jerk and I have to continue to live either with him or, you know, make decisions about, is this going to be the end of this marriage, et cetera, you know, and that's a subject for a different podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, All of those decisions, the question she had to come by is realizing, you know, how am I responding? You know, when he, when he says certain things, um, how am how I, I responding respond? and right. do I want to go through this with God right. or without him? Right, right, right. And, um, and she has testified over and over numerous times just of, um, like supernatural grace right. at, at times, you know, that, um, of a change in mindset and change in her own heart and, um, and even, uh, a, a joy too. like, this doesn't make sense, but we're, you know, we're in the middle of this crisis and, um, and even hard things in our marriage. And yet, you know, actually there's, there's a, there's a joy going on mm-hmm. here. And that just tells me the Holy Spirit's at work yep. and that's exciting. And this is an, a huge, um, thing to watch too of not being able to be face to face and yet you know and telling her some things but trusting the lord that he's following through right. with her well the other thing i saw that you did in your relationship with lisa besides answer immediate questions you always one pointed her to jesus or backed it up with scripture mm-hmm. so that you were beginning to point her to who he is and right. and very often she would feed back um, a misunderstanding 
Mm-hmm. Or she would feed back that she, oh, I got this, mm-hmm. right? Right. But then right. two days later, it seemed like she had forgotten it again. Yeah. And so it's kind of that process. Right. Um, and the other thing that you did I thought was really practical is saying, okay, put the tarot cards away. Stop going to psychic readers. Mm-hmm. And instead of that, every time that you would normally read a tarot, do a tarot reading or go to a psychic reader, Rather than do that, begin to open up your Bible, and you gave her some practical guidance about where, where to start, and mm-hmm. and then really listen to God. What does right. God want to say to you? Let mm-hmm. God speak to you through His Word. And it's funny as she started almost following Jesus before she, she got, got saved. saved. Yeah, yeah. Because for she did that. We challenged her to a month. Yeah, and she did it about a month, and, and it was maybe five weeks that she. Yeah. Came to know came Christ. To yeah. But she sort of recognized that, okay, she she got some exposure. And see, a lot of people mm-hmm. that have gotten into witchcraft, they have a smattering of Christianity. Yeah. Um, Lisa had, a, I think, a Catholic, Catholic background. background. Mm-hmm. And so not a lot of teaching, just some tradition, but that didn't seem to really scratch her for spiritual it. itch mm-hmm. for communion with the right. spiritual world, right. actual involvement, you right. know. The whole and spirit, yeah. Person. She she was clear on Jesus. He came and died on the cross, forgives me of my sins, you know, that part of the gospel, um, which is great. But um, no understanding of it. He wants a relationship with you in your inmost being, um, day in, day out, and everything. He's for you. Um, and you, you reach that by... By the by, your spirit, right. you know, not through rituals, um, mm-hmm. but um, through actually turning to him as a real person mm-hmm. to have a relationship with. And so she, she kind of tested the waters, yeah, for that, and she found him faithful. And, and so she gave her life to him. What was interesting is that as she would turn to God in prayer and seeking his guidance, asking him specific questions, she found God would speak to her. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, that she would get real answers that felt very different. Than her than, emotions. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. She could tell, like, wow, I, like, I actually heard something, and it didn't, you know, it was like real wisdom that's making a real difference. Right. And I have a sense that this is God. And she would run it by us, too. Mm-hmm. Like, I think he's saying this because she's she's not as familiar with the scriptures. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and uh, you know, most every time I was like, yeah, that sounds just like something Jesus would say. Right. You know, like, I need to, I think I need to really let this go and be forgiving. You mm-hmm. know, it's like, yep, that sounds like the Lord. Yep. <laughs> You're not getting deceived there. Well, a lot of times, uh, you know, I used to have the main mindset, and a lot of this is the way people are taught, is that first thing you need to do is you need to get somebody to pray a prayer. And, you know, and until they make a full commitment to Jesus, they you can't start discipling them to actually follow him. But if you look at the Gospels, his followers, his disciples followed him oh, and wow. and weren't saved yet. Mm-mm. They began following him and they became saved mm-hmm. as they had a greater mm-hmm. growing understanding of who Revelation. he is and, and what he could do for them and what he expected. Yeah, I think, um, and that's this is something that's kind of been different for me too of of that leading someone to the Lord and then kind of starting them, and that that's all fine and good um, on a on a relationship. But I, I definitely observed the Lord working in a different way this this time mm-hmm. in my relationship with her long distance and um, of her kind of embarking on following him and mm-hmm. and you know kind of what the disciples that came up to jesus and, and were like where are you going where do you stay you know just mm-hmm, kind of that mm-hmm, curiosity mm-hmm. um for her to kind of explore a little bit and just be that sounding board for her as she was exploring and and again keep pointing her to you need jesus you need jesus right. in this and um um and again trusting the lord it's the work of the holy spirit in her heart of, of turning mm-hmm. it around there were a couple of key points too where you had to make it very clear that you don't just need Jesus so that you can go to heaven when you die. Absolutely. That Jesus doesn't just for you know, her question was like, so if I believe in Jesus, he's going to forgive me. Okay. How's that going to help me? Right. right? right. And so very often um, people who have turned to witchcraft and alternate forms of spirituality, they're, they're very comfortable with the fact, well, big God is way out there, sure. but they're looking for personal relationship and involvement that's mm-hmm. real and practical. 
And if you don't understand those aspects of the gospel, then it's going to be very difficult for you to reach those people. Mm -hmm. Um, So my encouragement is that you really develop your relationship and awareness of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And that Jesus. So it's real for you. Exactly. It's not just theory or, you know, a step in the, in the discipleship process you're taking anything, but it's really real for for you. And you're talking out of that personal experience. On the flip side, if you've got that, if you have a a real relationship with the Holy Spirit where God's changing your heart, He's empowering you, setting you free from fear, worry, anxiety, Mm -hmm. that He's answering your prayer, that you're experiencing fellowship with God that supplies you with peace and joy when you should be frustrated and angry, (laughs) um, or other people around you, or you're experiencing that, then you know the gospel well enough Mm -hmm. to be able to give um, people who are turning to other spirits uh, that because you know in Galatians witchcraft is identified along other things like drunkenness and idolatry and adultery it's just a work of the flesh exactly the flesh mm-hmm. reaches out for help, help and control that's really at the root a lot mm-hmm. of fear a lot of control, control. and anxiety issues mm-hmm. drive people towards alternate forms of spirituality mm-hmm. um, and so teaching them their value to God, Mm -hmm. who he is, his character, Mm -hmm. all of those things I saw you do with Lisa. And it is, it's just beautiful to watch it unfold too of um, that truth that yes, our sins are forgiven. And then when we die, we go to heaven. That that's awesome. But um, the, the clincher kind of part of it it really Mm -hmm. was for her, I think too, is that now I need help now. I need a change now. Mm -hmm. Um, Not realizing, you know, she thought it was maybe in her husband, but you know, now she's come to find out in her. And um, And that was a real key key turning point. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and to see uh, God's faithfulness and that, yeah, I mean, when we turn to him, he's right there and, and the, his desire to live in and through us, Mm -hmm. through his spirit is, um, uh, that's the gospel. That's the gospel, not just the going to heaven part. <laughs> right. And it was really neat. We, Tina and I, you know, she would come to me like, she's getting closer. Yeah, I know, she's getting to keep praying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, right. and it wasn't Absolutely. just Tina and I, we were sharing this with our, our uh, discipleship praying group. We her. were regularly praying yeah. and every week it was like, what's the update yeah. with Lisa? Yeah. And we yeah. were all just going after her in prayer. Yes. And uh, Because there was, I yeah. mean, there's some serious things trying to keep her distracted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And off course, and um, some serious trials and, and mm-hmm. difficulties in her life that could really trip anybody up. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, that that prayer, God was having things happen through that. I remember there was a point where uh, she began to acknowledge, you know, what my husband's not the only one that needs, needs to, to change. change. Yeah. And that was so precious because part of what had happened is that God had showed her so much grace in Jesus that she finally had a safe place Mm -hmm. to really hear from God, Lisa. And and it wasn't as condemnation. No, she said that. It was God inviting her into a different way of living. living. Right. Do you realize that there's, you know, this will help you. There's so much more freedom. You know, she even said it wasn't like in a condemning voice. It was in a, here, this will help you. And that was really how I saw Tina sharing the gospel with Lisa. It wasn't avoiding the fact that that this is wrong and this is right, but that wasn't the approach that she took as she shared scriptures like from Deuteronomy, uh, where, you know, let's see, I actually wrote it down here, Deuteronomy 18, 9, 9 to 15, where it talks about, um, you know, don't learn the ways of the nations. These are abominable practices mm-hmm. when you consult mediums and spirits and various things like that. Lisa had never never read any of those things. Mm -hmm. But when Tina shared it, it wasn't, see, you're an abomination. (laughs) It it was, these things aren't good for you. you. They're not God's best for you. So it was less about right and wrong. Why is it wrong? Well, it's wrong Wrong because because it's not not good. good It keeps you from God, the one person that can help you. It's a, so it's really ministering to her heart and for her good, not Mm -hmm. condemnation, but ministering gospel, good yeah, news. Absolutely. God's got something better for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we saw that. Um, 
there was another key incident when um, she saw how the, her lifestyle was affecting her daughter. Right. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, she went in. She to, went in to uh, go buy a Bible. Yeah, and I think she had gone into a s- spiritual store, and not necessarily a Christian store, because there were tarot cards there. Right, and her daughter's like, "Look, mommy." Yeah, yeah unless family Christian stores started carrying <laughs> them, Kara, which, yeah. which wouldn't surprise me these days. But, um, <laughs> yeah, and 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 it's interesting because when her daughter pointed that out, and she it hit hit her. Oh my goodness yeah look i would an influence on my daughter and i don't want her to go down this path right so yeah she was surprised that you know she's in there shopping for a bible and just out of nowhere the daughter was attracted to, to the tarot these cards. tarot cards and she i think she realized that you know what i've opened a door into my family mm-hmm and she began to realize there was a point where she began to realize that all of her practices were involving these spirits that were not just trying to not just working in the way she wanted but they were causing they all these other shenanigans agenda. and disruptions yeah, definitely definitely you know we've not only ministered to lisa we've had a lot of other experiences in in uh sharing with people uh one young lady that we led to christ her name was bethany and uh you know Mm -hmm. we began discipling her and after about three weeks after her giving her life to jesus she's over at our house and she said i think i'm supposed to tell you about my friends and we were like oh great okay. you know we yeah. we love to hear about your friends and she had spirit friends. spiritual friends and yeah. the way that those spiritual friends had gotten involved in her life um is that she had some trauma, some trauma. Mm-hmm. she had some good friends that died and these mm-hmm. uh, there was a three of them uh, at various points had come and introduced themselves and introduced themselves as, as the deceased, deceased friends. friends. Yeah. Um, but she said, ever since I've received Jesus, they are very unhappy with all this. And I'm beginning to wonder <laughs> if they're on, playing for the right team, team basically. Right. Yeah. 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 And uh, it was really difficult for Bethany to realize, you know what? Um, she well, she kind of already intuitively knew, knew. by the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. um, but you know, rather than us telling those spirits to get she out did. of her life, she had to cut it off. We led her through. First of all, we led her through some teaching. Just uh, we use First Timothy chapter two verse five, where it says, "For there's one God and one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus." Um, and so we helped her to see that these spirits had gotten involved in her life because, but they were functioning functioning as mediators. They wanted to come between her and God, Um, but there's only one. And so these were antichrist spirits. These were uh, deceiving spirits that were trying to Mm -hmm. keep uh, her eyes off of God, which is why they had been Been very upset. (laughs) So we led her through a prayer of specifically repenting about those things. And we told her about her authority in Christ. And we had her tell those spirits to go and to leave her life forever. Um, and that's often very good because you know what? If if she you're the ownership. one mm-hmm. who is who is casting out the spirits, Jesus said, you know, if you cast a spirit out of someone, and this is it's a little bit different. Like in that situation, if someone is so demonized, they don't have the ability to exercise their own faculties, exactly. like the gathering demoniac. You better set them free, cast them out, right? Um, but when somebody's come to comes to know Jesus. Um, or needs to come to know Jesus very often will involve them in that process. Because so, it's discipleship for them exactly. in learning how to discern spirits and what to do to stand in their authority. Because if you tell it to go, you know that's like the police show up and 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 show kick your boyfriend out of the house that's been living with you instead of you saying <laughs> get out of here. Right. <laughs> you know. Mm. Then what happens when the police aren't around? You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's really important that you do that. Um, and for Bethany, that was very effective of her realizing, you know what? 
I can trust Jesus. I don't need these other mediators. Mm-hmm. And and those are that would be what we would call familiar spirits. Yeah. When someone has a relationship with a spirit that's not on the right team, uh, that's not Jesus, Jesus the Holy Spirit, the Holy right? Spirit. Uh, because no angel, even though angels are ministering spirits, they don't function as mediators. Right. They don't want a personal relationship with you. They their <laughs> relationship with minister. God, you know, it's like I'm just doing what I'm my boss what told tells said. me, right? Yeah. I'll I'll help uh, you, but that, yeah. It's so that's really important. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a point after, um, at some point in the process with Lisa, we had her um, not only tell the spirits to go, but to gather up all the trinkets Trink- and, yeah, and everything, objects associated with that. Yeah. Um, you see that in the book of Acts where people gathered their spell books and mm-hmm. their burned idols it. and burned it, and that was, mm-hmm. uh, that was important. Uh, a very practical step. Along, that's mm-hmm. kind of almost like the the precursor to a baptism or right. associated. It's a physical it's act, act that, that demonstrates that. Yeah. Um, I remember one time I was in Zanzibar, mm-hmm. and we actually led a wi- uh, a witch, witch doctor, doctor uh, to Jesus, and it was very interesting how that came about because um, he he showed up on our doorstep basically saying, I want to become uh, a Christian. And I, so I, through a translator, said, why? You know, what what's going on? I want to find out what was going on in his heart. And uh, the translator said, he says he's a witch doctor. I said, well, why does he want to become a Christian? He, he can't be a witch doctor and a Christian. The witch doctor says, I understand that. And I, he, I said, have him tell you the story. And so his story was this. He said, you know, he was raised to be a witch doctor. And that was how he made his money. And he actually though that these spirits that he was plugged into although you know he could perform whatever sacrifices they wanted Mm -hmm. in order to you know do some things with his customers customers he said these spirits are always harassing me they want more and more from me they wake me up at all hours of the night Mm -hmm. they always want more sacrifices he said, I've been telling them for the last year, I want to be rid of you. Mm, <laughs> I want yeah. to be done. He said this morning when I was going to meditate that a spirit came to me and told me that if I want to be free, I must come here and speak to the white man about becoming a Christian. <laughs> and and I'm like, <laughs> you know, oh. apparently either an angel Hope broke through, through yeah. Or, you know, Gabriel's Holy got a shit. sword at the back of the neck, neck of this of demon, demon saying, hey, tell you him. tell him, you know. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so that all came about. And the same thing, and, and how I knew he understood the gospel is as we're sharing, you know, I shared the story, who Jesus is, that he has authority over heaven and earth. He has a, the, the power that's greater than all the demons. He can set us free. He can protect us. But we need to give our lives completely to him. Uh, we can't worship other gods. We can't submit to other spirits. In fact, God wants to make us free from them so that we can set other people free. Um, it, all of those things, the cross, the resurrection, all of that. Uh, I knew he understood me when he said, but how am I going to make my living? How am I going to make my money now? Mm, He understood the the implications, right? (laughs) Money, money, yeah. And I said to him this, and that's where a lot of Christians might back off. But listen, I said to him, if you love money more than you love your own soul, these demons will drag you to hell with them. Mm -hmm. But if you are willing to turn to God, and trust him, mm-hmm. he is able to provide for you Absolutely. and show you a new way of income yeah. that won't involve this. And he mm-hmm. said, are you willing to follow Jesus and trust him in this way? Because if you're not willing to trust him with your life, how can you trust him with your, your eternity? eternity. Mm-hmm. And he said, yes. And so I said, okay. So then I noticed he had certain rings and necklaces on. And and I said, so um, these rings and necklaces that you have on are... Are spirits attached to those? He said, uh, yes. I said, well, are you ready to take all those off? Because, you know, they they, they do this for, for luck, for protection, mm-hmm. you know, and, and they have to be serious to take this off because they know that the demons that are associated with that will be offended mm-hmm. that you no longer trust. So they're really willing to trust Jesus. And he took off his ring, took off his necklace. He, there was something around his waist he took off. And then he asked me about his watch, you know, and I said, are there any spirits uh, attached, <laughs> attached to your to watch? He said, no, only Casio. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so we let him keep his watch. And then he made arrangements with a local pastor to go to his house to gather up all of the items associated with witchcraft. But before we did all that, we led him to Jesus. He received Jesus, but we also led him to receive the Holy Spirit. And mm -hmm. he began to speak in other tongues and to receive the power of the Holy Spirit because it's very important that you don't leave a void. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's been very important for Lisa, for all of the people that we've ever led out of um, uh, witchcraft to not only come to Jesus for forgiveness, but to come to Jesus the for Holy the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, because mm -hmm. Jesus doesn't just take away our sins. He fills us with his life. He will, He's the one who baptizes us in the Holy Spirit yeah. and truth. Mm -hmm. So, brothers and sisters, we hope that this was encouraging to you. Um, these podcasts are for the specific reason to encourage you to walk mm -hmm. in the fullness of Jesus Christ personally, but also to minister effectively yes. and to impact, impact the world around world. you. So we, if this was a blessing to you, we encourage you share this with other people, help get the word out there. Um, you can also check out our other resources uh, uh, at, full, at fullspeedimpact.com. We also have an online training program, a lot of books and things like that that you'll find uh, at the website. So God bless you. Have an amazing day. Walk with God and go and impact.